Have you ever seen a strange PowerShell process in Task Manager and thought to yourself, did I actually run that? Well, there's actually a good chance that it's malicious. Those strange commands, unexpected logins, and weird network connections are the breadcrumbs attackers leave behind in what we call indicators of compromise. So on today's episode, we're going to find those little breadcrumbs and turn them into something useful that any blue teamer would be proud of. Welcome to Learn with Hack the Box, a unique YouTube series focused on fast tracking your career in either offensive or defensive cybersecurity. This is actually our 18th episode in the series, so if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing so you don't miss the upcoming episodes. So by the end of this episode, we're gonna explain what indicators of compromises are, how to find them in Windows event and Sysmon logs, creating a simple YAR rule, as well as going through and creating a use case worth documenting. So what are indicators of compromise? Well, in short, IOCs are these artifacts that are left behind when something happened or is currently happening in your environment. It could be something as simple as a weird process popping off in Task Manager, a suspicious IP address and your system suddenly loves talking to, or that one registry key that just screams, I definitely wasn't here before. Seeing these things individually seems kind of normal, but when you start connecting the dots, like seeing PowerShell launching Outlook, or like a file being dropped into a system that's in app data, or a, you know, a process talking to who knows where, it no longer seems random. It kind of starts to unfold the story that we have to look into and kind of see what's actually going on. All right, so let's talk about where most investigations start. Let's talk about Windows event logs. Now, when it comes to these Microsoft Windows security events, it's kind of like an all-encompassing black box where as long as you know what you're looking for, uh, you can find a lot of really good stuff. You just gotta know where to um, pivot, where to look in your environment. Starting off our list will be the process creation or the 4688 event. Now, now this is the who ran what event code. Uh, with command line auditing turned on, this will show you the exact command and process used, which is the gold for spotting odd PowerShell runs or weird parent-child chains. So the next one we're gonna be looking at is actually a pair, the successful logon or 4624 and the failed logon, which is 4625. Now this shows when someone successfully logs in, normal by itself, but suspicious when it's 3 a.m. from a foreign IP or follows a burst of failed attempts. A stack of these with the same account usually means someone has been hammering away at passwords. So you kind of follow the story with this. If you see a 4625 cascade ending with a 4624, that's a red flag. Now, 4672, or special privileges assigned, is an interesting one. This one fires when a privilege token is used. If a normal user suddenly gets admin level actions, you kind of want to know why. And the last one on this list that I want to mention is going to be the 4720, or the user account created. Uh, backdoor accounts are a favorite when it comes to these persistent tricks, and an unexpected 4720 is like finding a new key under a doormat. Now, Windows event logs are pretty great, but they only tell like part of the story. Now, if Windows events were like the head lines of a newspaper, Sysmon is like the full novel. Sysmon, or short for System Monitoring, is a free tool from Microsoft's Sys Internal Suite that supercharges what you can see on a Windows system. Sysmon is great because it basically records everything that Windows events would either skip or oversimplify. Uh, things like process hashing, um, parent-child relationship and process, uh, network connections, even registry changes in your environment. I mean, it, it is basically everything that Windows events should be. It, it, it blows my mind that people in 2025 would not have Sysmon installed in their environment. So once you have Sysmon installed, it's like a simple XML config file. Uh, once everything's installed in your environment, you can then take these high fidelity artifacts that are being developed and you can then get a better idea of what's going on in your investigation. Uh, so let's look at a few specific examples of these IDs that we look for when we're creating our indicators of compromise. So starting off the Sysmon list, we're gonna look at event ID number one. This is process creation. Now this is very similar to the Windows Security Event ID 4688, uh, but with way more details like command line, parent process, and file hash. This is great for spotting malicious execution and correlation of known bad hashes. Next is Sysmon ID number three, network connections. Now this logs which process opened up outbound connections along with IP addresses and ports. This is perfect for identifying beaconing and exfiltration activities. Another good one is Sysmon Event ID 11, or file create. This tells you where and when new files 
files were created, like dropped payloads or scripts for persistence. And lastly on our list is Sysmon Event ID 13, or registry value set. This also logs registry changes, like adding a run key for persistence mechanisms. And just like that, you're now recording attackers' behaviors in high definition. Now, it's not individual indicators of compromise that we're working with now. With Sysmon, it tells a holistic story. So you have a suspicious PowerShell process event ID 1. It's now making a weird connection uh, outbound. This is a network connection event ID 3. You then start seeing that that connection is now related to pulling down a new payload. That's event ID 11. And then because of that, registry changes are being made in your environment, event ID 13. So you can kind of see how if you were going IOC hunting, this really makes the whole landscape a lot more level uh, and it makes it a lot easier to maneuver. Uh, it's it's I know it's resource intensive sometimes, but Sysmon is so important when it comes to IOC hunting. It's no longer a nicety, it's a necessity. So if you made it this far, we've already explored some of the logs, you've dug into some of these processes, but now we wanna see the files themselves. Now, a lot of times we are able to see in the event logs themselves, but not all the times do the bad guys announce their presence in these logs. You know, we have to actually check the disk itself. This is where Yara comes in. Yara allows you to write these little rules that describes what malware looks like underneath the hood. Strings, code snippets, or even little patterns of behavior baked into its binary. Think of Yara rules kind of like a wanted poster, like a bounty. Hey, we're looking for this particular malware sample with these types of strings, uh, these functions, and uh, these types of mutex in the name sample. Of the malware itself. Uh, if you find these things, let us know, alert us, and then we can go and do a deeper investigation and see if it truly is bad. But what it does, it allows us to do that uh, system-wide matching to find known bad. Now, what I did is I went through in my lab here and I created a very simple YAR rule. Now, what this is gonna do, it's gonna look for these API calls in our files, uh, just for these kind of like these uh, process injections. So we're gonna go through and see if it's actually uh, some of these virtual allocations, writing process memories, what have you. Very simple, but the idea Idea is that this is going to look off of indicators of compromise that are based on the file itself. Um, if, if the event logs or the security logs or sysmon, anything was cleared out of our system and the file was still present, we can actually go through and check the strings on these assets. And if these conditions are met or our tags are found or certain, you know, uh, conditions are, are present, um, our YAR rule will then alert. We'll say, hey, this file does have these uh, indicators of compromise present. Now, if you wanna check out some real world IOC hunting, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Hack the Box Academy's incident handling process or the intro to digital forensics modules. And if you're looking for a more hands-on approach, you're gonna check out the Hack the Box Sherlock's Labs, where there's a bunch of different ones you can go into and check out things like Sysmon logs and Windows events, uh, perfect for sharpening your blue team skills. So you have all these IOCs scattered around, these odd processes, these weird logins, these fi <laughs> dropped files, what have you, uh, all these raw items of evidence uh, but it doesn't really do anything unless you create some context, some some, uh, some bias around why these things would occur. And that's what making a good use case is all about. So you want to think of yourself as a forensic storyteller of the SOC. You're not here to say like, hey, PowerShell ran. It's, hey, PowerShell ran from an unknown IP address as an admin user. And then a weird file was dropped into your environment. And then a user account was created post that activity. You know, you want to put all these pieces together uh, to make sense of it. So that way we're not just creating a list of IOCs, we're actually kind of recreating a crime scene. So at this point, we have everything we need from an incident handling perspective to put together a clear and concise story. We have the, you know, the who, you know, what kind of assets and what kind of users were affected by this activity. The what, you know, what actually happened, the events and the artifacts are associated with this activity. You know, the when, we actually wanna to put together and reconstruct a timeline to see this activity and what may have occurred from what we have in our findings. You know, the, uh, the how, what happened, what kind of attack, you know, mechanisms uh, and vectors were taken advantage of as well as the persistence mechanisms that were in place that allowed them to take advantage of those opportunities. And then the why, like how this actually matters, what kind of impacts infecting our environment, as well as remediation steps and how we perform our response. And that's the secret. A, a use case is not just technical, it's narrative. It, it shows the who, what, when, where, whys. It shows the, um, the translating the jumble of logs and these things into actionable play-by-plays. So things that the attackers do, just something that we can actually act 
act upon. So when you're done collecting IOCs, don't just file them away, map them out, write a story and make it actionable. And that's how you take analyst work and make it a little bit better. Now, if you're looking to learn some quick ways of detecting network traffic anomalies in your environment, you're gonna watch this video right here where we discuss network traffic analysis with Wireshark. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and consider checking out Hack the Box's new Certified Junior Cybersecurity Associates or the CJCA certification. Hack the Box's first certification covering both offense and defensive cybersecurity. Thank you so much and have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.